Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Civilization VI Rise and Fall. It looks like uh, Greece is going to be completely rebellioned out of the game in four turns, and I think it's probably better for us to let that happen than to take Athens by force. The warmonger penalty for actually eliminating another player from the game is very large, but I don't think we'll take it if a rebellion claims their last city. I think we just sit here and watch. Uh, as far as other things in the game are going, this military emergency is no problem at all. Honestly, I think that Alexander definitely should not have taken this, right? He was offered the choice of whether he wanted to go in on this or not, and given that Sparta is all the way over here where it is, and my level of military advancement versus his level of military advancement, like, he would need a massive advantage over us in order for this to be a thing he could do. So, the AI, I think, really screwed up by taking this emergency. Um, so that's not a danger. I'm not concerned about that. We're not going to be conquered. Nobody else is really pushing on a victory type. Is anybody on rocketry yet? Okay, Australia has rocketry. I think it's too late. I think it's too late. So we're at 67 uh, tourists. We are going to need 168 as it stands now to win the game. Now, you have to expect this number to go up. Right, Alexander is still producing culture. Um, as soon as Gorgo's eliminated, this will be our our target value, and we're making it. We're making the space up quickly. I think we've got this. I think we're on it. We just need to keep ramping up our tourism in whatever way we can. We have some shopping malls completing soon. Uh, I know we're we're getting close on a couple of. Oh yeah, you're too close to Athens. We just back up. We're getting close on a couple of archaeologists, so that'll help a lot. Uh. The satellite broadcast card is coming, and we actually do have some great works of music. Except maybe plastic. Plus one food from fishing boats. We've earned a great person. It's a great admiral that I have. I do not value at all at this point in the game, but we don't have our next normal age secured yet even, so we may as well take all the great people we're offered. Uh, yeah, back up. Let's just chill. I think this war is actually over now. Uh, so I'm gonna have everybody just just hang out and wait and then in a couple of turns when this becomes a free city we will uh, we will roll in and take it sure plus 20 production toward naval naval raider units I'm not actually sure what units are even in that promotion uh, class we need food okay well a watermill will actually be very good here because we have two uh, two sources of wheat. Also, I finally turned off the, the yields. I really could have had the, the yield icons on the tiles turned off long ago. Because I want to, first of all, be able to enjoy the extremely nice art. And secondly, it's just like, you know, it doesn't matter anymore. I'm no longer making decisions about tiles based on their yields, right? Let's see, we finished our shopping mall. Which is for tourism. Plus, you know, obviously we have all kinds of stuff boosting. Uh, we don't need growth, or we don't need housing, rather. To be perfectly honest, at this point, we can pretty much... Does any of this matter? No, probably not. Okay, that might. That might. We have some quarries somewhere. Uh, now, I'm a little worried about this. Obviously, anybody who manages to launch the moon landing is going to make our lives a lot more difficult. It's probably going to make it faster for us to conquer them than it would be for us to actually run them out um or run them out via culture but we'll worry about it when it happens john Curtin's the only one who's even slightly a danger speaking of what is john Curtin's? yeah he's got a reasonable amount of domestic tourists already do we know okay we kind of know where he is and we share a border with him we could make some stuff happen if we had to he does have an airfield over here. An aerodrome. Uh, what was what were you doing? Uh, you were probably just hanging out. We got another natural national park. I'm pretty sure we can take this antiquity site out without disturbing it. Out of curiosity, we have a tourism lens here. Let's uh let's take a look. 
So you can see the number of lifetime tourists that uh, these things have generated, right? Lifetime accumulation, 312 tourism uh, makes one tourist. 1,600 makes six. Yes, yeah, so those, those numbers suggest that this works that way. So over time, as they generate as they generate tourism, uh, they they attract visiting tourists, and that's what that number is that we are increasing. Uh, yeah, we're increasing this number. So wonders that you build early, great uh, world wonders like you know these kind, uh, will will create a lot of tourism over their lives. But a lot of it will be toward the end of the game when you start getting all of the policy cards and the, the governor abilities and stuff. I would be curious to try to try to be really pursuing a cultural victory from the beginning and see how long it takes to get your your tourism value to something actually uh, actually interesting. Because in the, in the beginning of the game, if you're getting great writers and stuff right away, you can get some tourism rolling, but it's often, you know, it's going to be hard to push it even even to triple digits, and certainly uh, you're not, you're not going to get anywhere near this. We've attracted enough tourists to make our culture dominant over Scythia. Neat. Uh, we don't have any wonders that are super relevant... This would be nice to have. Obviously, we can only build it in the government plaza city. Oh, you don't even have a theater square. <laughs> Alright, we can probably do something about that. Ooh, this is a plus three. I mean, it doesn't really matter where the plus culture is. I no longer care about these... Uh, what do you call it? I no longer care about these uh, adjacency bonuses. They do not matter. Pretty much just jumping around building whatever has the possibility of creating some tourism. We have a neighborhood in this city already. It looks like I do not. We don't need the housing, but we can build a shopping mall. And again, I'm just trying to put them in locations where I know for a fact there cannot be any uh, any national parks. Although, also, it is fairly unlikely we will build any more national parks under any circumstance. Uh, and I'm not going to try too hard to optimize our trade routes or anything anymore. We're still making them. Uh, is, this is an ancient artifact of Greece. Okay, ancient Greek artifacts. Oh, right, we get to use his thing twice, because we have the mausoleum at Halicarnassus. All right, another shopping mall is completing. And you can see we're uh, <clears throat> we're really pushing. This is a very good tourism value, I think. I'll be honest with you, I don't do cultural victories a lot. Oh no, man, they really ran in all of the muskets. NASA spent millions of dollars in. Okay, get get out of here. Notifications. So we probably don't need professional army. Uh, I've, I've been keeping it in because we have been advancing our military tech, and right, we could have generated uh, some unit upgrades at any time. And also, there was no, there's not really any other red stuff that's super relevant. So, is there any red stuff that's relevant now? Honestly, no, huh? I guess this this is something. Units lose less combat strength from being injured. That'll make it. Slightly faster to take that uh, that city state, and then satellite broadcasts. So we need to cut things that are not direct producers of tourism at this point. Yeah, extra um, extra production toward wonders. The any wonders that we build at this point are going to be so late that they won't have much of an effect. Okay, we got another. What a time for some more great works of music. Hold on. Let's look at all of our effects and stuff. So we're not getting... Governors are not giving us extra tourism from Great Works. Okay, I'm just trying to... I was trying to figure out if it matters where we put this. But I think it doesn't. I think we can just put these in any place where we have slots and we'll be fine.
Okay, Chapin. Now, we were really close to another great person there. What? Here we go. 350 signs for every artifact in this city. Artifacts in all cities generate 300% of normal tourism. Hey, that's a pretty good great person for us. Okay, well, we'll get her next turn. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend resources on her when we are totally guaranteed to get her next turn. Okay, where's the next nearest artifact? All right, what else can we research? What else can we... Is it still called researching here? What else can we... Civics? You know what I'm trying to say. Okay, online community sounds pretty good. Make some trade routes, distribute some extra tourism. Boy, a thing at the end... A card at the end of the game that can produce... Yep. Is in fact gone. Or, she is, in fact, gone, rather. Yeah, a card right at the end of the game that can increase your culture output by, like, 40 or 50% if you're maintaining your city-states seems awfully powerful and simultaneously kind of useless. What would you do with all that culture if you're already that deep in the civic tree? All right, so John Curtin has declared war on us. He has some, he has some units. Okay, well, this... So, Greece is gone from the game, but Athens is showing that it's going to flip to Greece? Hold on, let's flip the loyalty thing on. Huh. Can the Greek Empire be resurrected by the free city flipping to Greece despite... I, this has got to be a, a graphical error, I'm sure, in a, in a couple of turns that'll, that'll show something that makes a little more sense. Okay, so where is this great person? We need to pop that great person in a place where we have a full artifact museum. So, Bulawayo. Oh, you need to be in a different theater square to create your other work, and then we gotta worry about this war. It would be cool if I didn't lose a city here. See, all of a sudden, I wish I had Professional Army back. Well, some of our stuff's already upgraded enough. So let's wake you up, roll you into the district. I mean, listen, we're not exactly the most up-to-date units, but... Armies are powerful, and Zulu armies especially so. Let's be done with that. Uh, is this on a hill? It is. So I should be able to... Yeah, okay. We can, in fact, shoot here. Where's my other... My other... Uh, my other uh, field cannons, unfortunately, are really far away. <laughs> Let's get rid of those crossbows, I guess. Prevent him from buying them up. Alright, shopping malls, and shopping malls, and it's all shopping malls and archaeology. All the things that the Zulus were famous for in real life. Also, I can't help but notice that we keep losing Zanzibar. I would appreciate it if that would stop happening. To be perfectly honest, like, I do not need my envoys for anything other than holding on to Zanzibar at this point in the game. Now we might see some plain stuff. I can't actually, um, I can't actually see this city, so unfortunately I have no idea, or this uh, tile, so I have no idea if there are planes in it, or it might be empty. But Babylon doesn't even have walls. We gotta rebuild Babylon's walls. In fact, it hasn't been. We haven't hit it in a long time. I'm sure we can just swap this to uh, reconstruct defenses this turn. Yeah. Okay. More great works. Always welcome. So what am I most concerned about here? Well, it's probably not this catapult. <laughs> Australia needs to revolutionize their forces slightly. 
the 1800s. They're out here with catapults. Also bazookas, but catapults. How worried am I about these cavalry guys? I guess, I guess I'm more worried about these than I am about the uh, anti-tank army. In large part because the anti-tank army is um, slow. Yeah, sure. We'll, we'll get the last promotion. So anti-cav is their whole thing, but they're just they're just too weak to do their job. Pierre was right when he said that one. Right, and our tourism value is increasing very rapidly. Uh, at this point, I don't think that any of the remaining tax matter. Having bombers could be cool. And then I guess we learn how to make nuclear weapons? We're pretty much done with science, though. Oh, Auckland. Yeah, uh, Australia is the suzerain of Auckland, so I guess we kind of have to pay attention to this now. We should probably also repair the walls here. All right. I mean, it's still showing the Greek icon. It's very strange. Oh, Alexander actually, like, brought some units. Him taking Alexandria back is not going to help him. So plus 100% theater squared district adjacency bonuses, not really relevant. Yeah, I don't think... I don't think I'm going to use that. We don't really need culture, you know? We need, uh, we need tourism. Get my other battleship over here. Hey, sculpture. We have some sculptures already, right? I think that might allow us to get a theming bonus. After that artist has created their first great work, we'll uh, figure it out. I'm trying to... Okay, city range strike. Wait, what can I range strike? It's just selecting Napoleon over and over again. Napoleon, move out of the way. There we go. Let's finish that guy off. Yeah, man. Attacking the Zulus in the late game seems just suicidal. Okay, there are, in fact, zero planes in this airfield. I'm actually really interested in what's going to happen here. We are not going to take that city because I I'm just... I'm too curious. All the girls in the world. Okay, I know we have some works of sculpture already. Are they all by the same person? Yeah, they're all Donatello. Ah, shoot. Well, that's not great. So we still haven't managed to theme even a single art museum. And we did steal an, ar uh, an archaeological museum that has stuff in it already, which I had not noticed. So classical, Scythian, and ancient barbarian artifacts. Ancient Scythian... okay. So if we trade out that... Now we just need to find one more 
ancient artifact that is neither Scythian nor barbarian to put in here, and this will be themed. Also, with all of our effects going on, we are now producing 63 tourism from our themed museum. Pretty all right. In fact, this is an ancient Greek artifact. This will, this will theme our museum, but unfortunately, we can't move it until this museum is full. So that archaeologist needs to hurry up and, uh, and get, get stuff done. Where are some antiquity sites around here? Let's see. This artifact is here, so we probably want this archaeologist to next go to... Maybe that antiquity site? So you don't go there. You know, there's a shipwreck over here. We'll grab that. Just sort of moving toward the front. I do wish that you could tell your spies to, especially your counter spies, to just repeat their mission. Okay, we've discovered a classical Australian artifact. We have quite a few classical artifacts as well. We might, we might well be able to get a. Uh, sure, we might well be able to get a classical themed museum as well. Yes, yeah, sure. Repair your monument. Man, our cities are not even as powerful as Gorgos were, and yet they seem to be basically invulnerable killing machines. A fortress, every single one of them. Scythia has conquered a lost city. If God had really intended men to fly, he'd... Also, my art museum just got pillaged. You know, Alexander, I was willing to just kind of let you hurl yourself against me, tire yourself out like a small child. But you may have crossed the line with that one. Okay, so now this is going to go to Scythia. That is unacceptable to me. Let's fix it. So there's really nothing closer? Okay. In three turns, we'll be able to retheme some of our museums. Things might get... Uh... We might be able to hit 2,000 tourism if, we're, if we play this well. Although, honestly, we might win the game by then. Oh, hey. Let's see. Builders gain their ability to use all their charges to provide bonus production to a district project. Not terribly relevant to us. Four slots for any great work. Well, we're not really having trouble with great work slots. Or all units, when they eliminate a unit, heal up to 20 hit points. Eh. Yeah. Sure. War department, why not? Turns out it might actually be relevant. So it does kind of feel like the AI are not really devoting themselves to the wars. An industrial Korean artifact. We don't really have that many Korean artifacts. Right, we're seeing like a handful of units, and I guess I'm doing the same thing. I probably have the world's largest standing military at like six units. But the reason I'm doing it is because I can. I can get away with this. I can I can still be effective at only these values. The AI very clearly cannot. We got plenty of time to get this done. I want to make sure that we have a path for our cavalry to run in and get the job done. Although with them being as injured as they are, I'm not sure... 
that's going to work out quite the way I want. All right, well, if he's going to be difficult... can farm XP on our guys here. I kind of thought the nice thing to do would not be to, would be to not shoot at our uh, our longtime ally, but he has forced my hand. How dare he pillage a museum? Oh, hey, turns out there's one right there. Yes, please repair the museum. Uh, Sparta Sparta has a neighborhood already, doesn't it? Nope, that's a Corinthian neighborhood, actually. Okay, I think it doesn't. Well, let's make one. So this city flipped back to Scythia as well. And I guess they liberated Preslav? I don't know that I've... The AI doesn't liberate cities a lot in my experience. But I can't imagine any other way that Preslav would have become Preslav again. Okay, it says that our guy will definitely have health left when he finishes this. This should work. Uh, let us not bring Greece back into the game. I'm not sure if they would come back with all of their... Uh, all of their domestic citizens, but or domestic tourists, but we certainly can't take the chance. Okay, so Alexander's managed to make it up to 199 domestic tourists. You know, our tourism value is increasing, but it may not be increasing quickly enough. So now we have to make a decision here. Do we want to try to actually fight John Curtin? Hmm. What I really need is for the war with Alexander to end. I need online communities to uh, be pumping trade route money, or to be pumping tourism to him over our trade routes, which means I need to be able to make trade routes with him. And John Curtin is at 166, so actually I would love to be running trade routes to him too. I need I need people not to be at war with me right now. Relations with him are still very positive. Once we can get him out of this uh, this war emergency, oh, great. Here's a question: Would we? Can we just? No, okay. No, he doesn't want an embassy either. Because I would love to just get my alliances back. That would be handy. Alright, so we got to start running trade routes to Alexander as soon as uh, some of our trade routes end. Yeah, I guess we'll, we'll just, like, pillage some of his stuff. We'll make him want to give up. We'll make the war uncomfortable for him to continue. And maybe he realized that the battleships were going to make it functionally impossible for him to attack me. Because actually, like, with three range, we could roll the battleships up to here. I mean, first of all, we could take this city, right? And this one. And then we could roll up to here and make a pretty good defense of Nodwengu or Bulawayo from the water. It would actually be very, very difficult for Alexander to ever conquer us. Alright, uh, this is Jinju's production menu. Does Jinju have a neighborhood? It does. So, building another one of those is not going to be useful. Okay, we have a trade route slot open. Babylon, it looks like Babylon does not have a neighborhood. Well, that is an opportunity for some shopping malls. Athens definitely doesn't. I don't think any of the other players have built any. They certainly hadn't when we built our first one. A medieval... Uh, ooh, you don't get many opportunities to make city-state artifacts. Let's do that. A medieval Auckland artifact. And now, I think we can we can theme up a little bit, right? 
So we have we have our ancient museum going. This one, yeah, ancient barbarian, ancient Tamiris. So we want to swap this clock out for the ancient Greek spear. Excellent, sixty-three more tourism, and then we have a whole bunch of artifacts here. So we have industrial uh, Macedon, classical. Classical Auckland, so if one of these is, yeah, this can be rethemed too. Beautiful. And then we have here, Classical Scythia, Classical Scythia and Industrial. So this is, this is nowhere. We have, we have no process, progress toward another theme. But honestly, things are going really well. So we got a bunch of portraits by Angelica Kaufman. Portraits by Rembrandt, Van Something, man. We still don't quite have, like, we have so many great works of art, and still no possible theming. Uh, Renaissance Korean artifact. That's a shame. We don't. We really don't need Renaissance artifacts. That's not helpful, like, at all. With John Curtin having lost his entire military push really, really quickly, I'm hoping that at the 10 turn mark we can just get him to take a peace offer. Aim for the moon. If you miss. And so I intend to threaten him, uh, just to make it clear to him that that is something he should do. He should take the peace offer. We're just going to run around in his territory and make him uncomfortable. Okay, no city center. The city center is going to be even further in. Can we do any meaningful damage to this? Yeah. Break this thing down a little bit. Oh, here's a city center. With planes defending it. Biplanes, but still planes. How effective would a biplane be at defense? That It seems like it would be a little awkward for that purpose. I mean, I'm building all these amenity structures in Alundi because, you know, we have the district, why not? But actually, do we need them? Everybody's ecstatic or happy. We have basically no war weariness. So you don't accumulate war weariness from just being at war. I'm not sure if I've explained this really. Uh, war weariness comes from losing units, particularly losing units in your own territory, uh, having stuff get pillaged, having cities get attacked. Uh, because we're winning our wars so thoroughly, our people don't actually, they are not negatively affected by the fact that we are at war. Uh, we did nothing, nothing relevant to build. I'm building like, I'm building research labs and stuff, even though I don't care about science anymore, just because we, in a lot of cities, we don't have anything to build that's super relevant. Yeah, we're, we're progressing pretty quickly here. It is still going to be a little while though. I guess I need to make sure that there's a trade route structure in each city. Uh, yeah, you want my horses, really. Well, I certainly have enough horses to be able to trade them. And I do appreciate the money. Uh, keep in mind, our money situation is going to get a lot better when we start trading with Alexander and, uh, and John Carton. Those international trade routes bring in a lot of cash. Oh, we hit 20 population. Cool. Not in one of our cities, of course, in a Korean city. Because the Korean cities are just better than ours are. Alright. Let's let's let this city have it. I don't have any intention of actually taking this city, but I want to let him know I can take it. <clears throat> Again, in the hopes that this will motivate him to surrender. Boy, we really could, too. This thing is putting up no... Uh, no kind of defense. Okay, we can't make any archaeologists here. We already have a neighborhood. I guess 
theater square festival over and over the great works you know it does increase our rate of gaining great works not like a huge amount because we're already producing so many great people points per turn but um better than nothing all right so we need to run at least one trade route to alexander it doesn't need to be uh, a ton I'm not sure what happens. I, I imagine barbarians can't capture archaeologists, but they probably can move on to an archaeologist and send it back to your city the way that they would with a great person. So I guess these ones are probably off limits. It looks like we haven't created any over here. There's a shipwreck out here. Yeah, this guy could go get shipwrecks, I guess. Are there any antiquity sites in this area? No, everything was perfect and peaceful here until we showed up. Either that or Greece already got all of the easy artifacts over here. You know what, let's use this guy as an explorer, actually. I'm pretty curious about this landmass. I mean, clearly there's Australian cities on it. But what else? Take that. Right in the airfields. Uh, so we should run a trade route to... At least one trade route to uh, Tamiris. So we're, we're just about to have this online communities policy up. And you know, it is at least possible, as horrible as this is to say... Okay, cool. We will be able to get our alliance back, probably. It is at least possible that we will, uh... uh that we will have to nuke somebody, or that we will be able to speed the game up by nuking somebody. Our expression of social media will define humanity's future. Terrifying. Terrifying thought. Wow. We are uh, we're really doing some damage here. Let's see. Are we far enough away from his declaration that we can go after peace? No, next turn. All right, like I said, I'm not going to take the city. I'm going to pillage this. Let's just sit here and let him know that we could take his city. We are generating lots and lots of great people points in Nodwingu. We already have a trade route structure here. Is there anything else that we could research that would matter? I guess e-commerce is good. It's a lot of production in gold. And let's see if we can get our alliance back with Alexander. Cool. We are, unfortunately, nowhere near Alliance Level 3. In fact, I think Alliance Level 3 may have gotten further away. Wasn't it 120 before? And this might be one of those things where it, like, increases over the course of the game so that you're, the earlier you get your Alliance, the more effective you are at raising it up. At Level 3, we share tourism and culture with each other. Uh, this is way better for the player who's going for the tour, who's close to the tourism victory than it is for the other player, I think. Okay, so now... We have to think about all of the policies that have to do with allied trade routes and stuff again. Hmm... So what do we maybe want to swip, switch in? Well, we have to bring in online communities. I think we, get, we can cut the growth and loyalty. That shouldn't be a problem. And then, like, we could cut colonial taxes, although eh, we're slightly gold positive again. So cutting online t or colonial taxes would mean we are not anymore. But, like, we don't need this culture. This culture is, is actually not doing anything for us anymore. So... Oh, that's right. The, the really good trade route policy is a green one, so I never move it, because 
There's, <laughs> there's nothing of value to put in the green slots. So is there anything that I would want to swap in? Yeah, this isn't bad. More money. Because I really don't think we need all this culture anymore. We're sort of past culture now. And then that that policy may eventually get replaced by the uh, the e-commerce policy. So we definitely need to get peace from uh, John Curtin and start trading with him. Oh. Increase trade route capacity by 1, plus 1, plus 25% tourism rate toward other civilizations you have a trade route to. Yeah, you know what? That seems like an alright great person. A lot of our cities are just going to be running... Hold on, before I, before I send this trade route out, this is the turn where we can go for peace, right? Okay, good. I'm not even going to be a jerk about it. I'm not going to try to extract any money from you. No? Not friends? Okay. Well, now we know we can run this trader to, uh, to Australia. You know, we also could spy on Australia. I'm going to I'm going to send Cindy Seaway to Perth. There are no great works to steal. Never mind. Just go ahead and counter spy. A medieval. You know, we actually don't have many Zulu artifacts. A medieval Zulu signet ring. Okay, I think our military's kind of done. Like, I, I don't think we need them anymore. So we're just going to send them to various cities where it would be good to have some defenses, and there we shall live. I'm going to keep a couple units in Babylon, just in case John Curtin decides to get a little, you know... An aquatic center. Alright, I don't think we've seen that one before. That city's not even valuable. Oh, you know what, though? There was a whole reason we uh, we settled here, wasn't there? Because we actually can build seaside resorts on that land. So now we have trade routes with all three other players. Uh, sure. We're all friends here. Yeah, okay. Good. Alright, I think we're pushing tourism out to other players about as quickly as we can. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Okay, tourism is boosted by open borders. We need open borders with John Curtin. Okay. That is acceptable to me. I will trade you a little bit of money. Okay, now we're outputting tourism as quickly as we can to other players, I believe. Look how nice it is. Also, look at the size of those builders. How do our people fit into our cities at all? The bummer about using Theater Square Festival is that it builds really quickly, so we're going to have to reissue this order every couple of turns to every city. Leave the atom alone.
I just thought it would be worth it to see if we could maybe get another alliance going. And you know, I haven't paid any attention at all to the... Um, to the religious war in a long time. How is that going? Things seem to not have changed very much. Taoism is pushing back across our territory, but there are some Sikh apostles. I mean, they're running around, they're fighting each other. It looks like they're going to keep each other completely uh, under control. We don't have to worry about this at all. First of all, make sure you can't build an archaeologist, and then Theater Square Festival. Wait, Sparta has a couple of districts, huh? I'm just going to click Future Tech. Let's go ahead and research all of the stuff. Alright, I think we're ready to do defense in case we got attacked by anybody, but I think the state of the world has sort of, uh, sort of cooled. Oh hey, that emergency, right. I got 2,800 gold. Good plan violently executed right now is far better than a perfect Well, what are we going to do with all this money, even? Unfortunately, the things that we need can't be bought, in most cases. You know what, I think you can buy archaeologists, though. You can indeed. Alright, we definitely have cities that could, uh, that could sell us some archaeology. And we're actually quite close to uh, we're quite close to being able to afford another naturalist as well. Yep, this is uh, <laughs> this is a real thing that we're just going to have to keep doing. I know you definitely already produced your archaeologist. You know, I don't know that we benefit pretty much anywhere from taking another uh, governor or another governor promotion of any kind. I guess we could use Amani to really, really solidify our hold on, um, on Zanzibar. Behold the wonders of the heavens oh, and hey. earth. A two-tile natural wonder provides plus three food, plus one production, and plus one culture, and 15 combat strength when defending. Oh, I get it, because your ships can kind of It's like the, uh, sort of like the maze. That's interesting. Oh, that's our worker over on the island, producing seaside resorts. This poor city has no industry. Actually, Undini is probably a place where we could buy an archaeologist, right? Yeah. And then, is the same true here? Oh, it would be if I had $1,200. Alright. All of the archaeology, go. Oh, is that signet ring? That signet ring that we got is medieval, isn't it? So we actually don't need another Zulu medieval thing. All right, a Korean medieval silver coin. Add that to the museum. Can you have a hill seaside resort? Let's go find out. And we don't particularly need to run trade routes. Like, there's no reason for us to run a trade route to any place that isn't just the highest yield at this point, right? Oh, I guess what we want to do is spread our trade routes back out over our cities to generate the maximum number of extra great people points from our, uh... 
uh, from our alliance. All right, and not this coming turn, but the turn after that, we'll have enough money to buy the archaeologist out in the other island city. Oh, I should I should buy our naturalist. You can just be in any city with a holy site, I believe. Actually, you might not need a holy site for this. So I think that uh, that the natural uh, national park site that we saw in Nobamba will be the next the next one. Uh, more antiquity sites. I kind of wish that this lensed the way a lot of things do, so that it was just the antiquity sites would be lit up, because there's a lot of icons here. Easy to miss stuff. No one would have believed in the last. I don't have open borders with the city-state. Okay. We have some shipwrecks we can search. Yeah, we are actually going to press up to, uh... Up past 2,000 tourism before we're actually able to uh, end the game here. We don't need archaeology here. We don't need any of this other stuff. More festivals. Nationwide festivals forever. Where did that guy come from? He honestly might be from over here. I guess... <laughs> I guess maybe this is what a couple of our military units should go do. Instead of sitting around. Let's go finally clear these barbarians out once and for all. So where is a field cannon? It doesn't really matter which one. Alright, we've almost got a normal age secured. Still got quite a lot of time before the next age flip. It should be pretty close to the last one, right? There's so much plastic in this culture. We're currently in the atomic era. Yeah, information will be the last one. It would be a shame if our final era was a normal. Very simple was my explanation. Okay, another sculptor means that we actually are going to get to theme some of our art museums. Yes, you just wait for backup. <laughs> Please don't go out and immediately die again. Oh, we have a city. We have a park spot over in Mycenae. Are the tiles? Yeah. Okay. Some of them are breathtaking. Can our naturalists be attacked by barbarians? I'm not sure. Let's do this from the water. That seems like the safest thing. Okay, so technically the best thing to do here is to run trade routes from unique cities to Alexander. So Nodwengu's already running one. Let's run this from Ulundi then, I guess? Wow, that's a lot of Sikh religious units. Uh, medieval... Ooh, free cities artifact. Okay, we definitely have three medieval artifacts now. Although, they're kind of sp probably spread across our, uh, our archaeological museums in weird ways. Dreams Why is this... Dream. Why doesn't this sort? It's sorted by uh, geographical location and not type. And I don't have any options to change that. That's kind of annoying. Okay, so medieval shaka, medieval... Gotta page through all this stuff and figure out where the heck all my artifacts are. Yeah, medieval free cities. So I need, I need, it's Chunchen and Gyeongju that have the two museums that have all the medieval stuff in them. I need that one to finish. I delay my... Okay, no, you cannot, in fact, put a seaside resort on hills. Well, that being the case, let's, let's pasture these cows. Aha!
archaeologist has found a wreck left by naval, a naval battle between Preslav and Lisbon. Really? That... That's super weird. Like some magistrate. Isn't Preslav, like, extremely far away from here? Yeah. How was there a Preslav naval unit? This must have been a, a, a land unit that was embarked? And then a Lisbon... Lisbon's down... How did this happen? <laughs> Boy, I would really have loved to, to see the story behind that one. Very strange. Very, very strange, in fact. One day there will be no okay, globalization. Ah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we don't really need this, right? So, we don't really need this either. Yeah, production, I guess. Let's go pull that out of the ground. Run this to... Yeah, look at these trade routes. Look at the outcome, output of this trade route. Uh, what else is there for you to grab? Oh, another shipwreck. Let's do that. Other cities within nine tiles gain plus two loyalty per turn toward your civilization. Other people's cities within nine tiles gain loyalty toward my civilization. Not that that's going to matter. It does seem like the funniest way to use that advisor. Or governor, rather. Okay, and I believe the remaining choices don't actually, like, they don't offer us any policies that are interesting. We never, bo we never bothered to pick up any of this stuff along the bottom here. Yeah, none of this matters to us. Um, I guess... We have so much culture, let's just complete the tree. Okay. There. Put everything on the... in the queue. Let's take this as a Lisbon artifact. This is classical era. We have a bunch of classical stuff. We probably will be able to theme some more museums as soon as these archaeologists run out. Uh, no. I will dig where I please. If you want to stop me, feel free to redeclare the war. Let's see how that goes for you. I don't think we ever need to change our policies again. I think they are permanently good. Wish there was like a rerun button just up at the top. Especially because projects are all the way at the bottom. And sometimes grabbing the bar and trying to pull it downward... It seems to, like, slip out of your grasp really easily. We are not switching government types. I'm quite happy with my democracy. Okay. So we have another full museum here. We actually have three... We have, we have sculptures from three different artists now, right? Uh... Yeah. So, Donatello... And... What? I can't... Okay. Alright, well, we'll move stuff into Jinju. Am I allowed to swap with Jinju? No. Okay, well, I guess we have to wait to theme our museum for ten turns? That's kind of annoying. Eight turns. What a strange way for that to work. What? What is the mechanical reason for that, I wonder? 
All right, unfortunately, I need to locate another dig site. So we'll run into uh, Australia proper here. What have we? Sure, an ancient Zulu artifact. That's true, this is where we were during the ancient era. Uh, so that means that we just filled another museum. Uh, the disappearance of that guy. So let's try to figure this out. We have ancient, medieval, okay. Yeah, if we swap this into this slot, it themes that museum. And then we have medieval... Renaissance and Ancient. Those are sculptures. There really needs to be a sort. Like I need to, I need to be able to just only look at my archaeological museums. Like, only ones that are not themed, even. So yeah, we have classical Scythian stuff. Alright. Let's swap a classical Scythian thing into... No, not the themed museums. Actually, hold on a second here. We're, most of our archaeological museums are already themed right now. We're not going to be able to make any any valuable changes here. Okay, we need we just need to get some more artifacts before we can swap anything else up. Twenty one fifty. How are we doing? We are actually very close to done. Somehow, Alexander lost tourists. Right? He was at 199 before, wasn't he? How does that happen? Oh, I guess we're drawing their domestic tourists away to make our visiting tourists? Is, ho is how it must work? This is the only thing that's consistent with what we're observing? So actually, we're going to win the game in like a turn or two here, I think. Well, I have to say, I did want to do a cultural victory. This is not exactly how I thought it was going to go. First of all, I thought we'd have a religion. Nope. Uh, this is probably the last time we have to queue these. Celebratory water park. doing it. We're going after him. Yeah, it kind of looks like uh, maybe John Curtin has gotten archaeology and has cleared out a lot of his territory. Man, there are a lot of city-state shipwrecks. How does that happen? Okay, well, I do believe when we press the next turn button here... Uh... Yep, there it is. Oh, right, and these are effectively silent. Okay, well, in case you wanted to know what he was saying, this is it. I have no idea why those are so quiet. I don't- I checked my audio sliders the other day. It's not like I have anything pulled all the way down. Those are just really, really quiet. Uh, so yes, as you might imagine, our culture per turn graph looks very, very good uh, <laughs> relative to everybody else's. So that was fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, that's going to be it for us for today, obviously. Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm not done yet with Civ 6. I want to do at least a couple more games in this series. So let me know in the comments below what you would like to see. In particular, uh, I would like to try to play a game where we actually get a religion this next time. But beyond that, I don't have any strong preferences. So, uh, yeah. Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.